Welcome to a View from the Top of Meridian Community College Athletics, sponsored by the Rush Sports Medicine Team. I'm your host, Christopher Harrelson, and every Wednesday at 9 a.m. here on Super Talk Meridian 103.3 FM, we'll take an inside look at what's happening around the world of Meridian Community College Athletics. In just a moment, I'll be joined by head women's soccer coach Mike Smith as we discuss the season as a whole and the ensuing playoffs that start next week. Soccer finishes up the season with sophomore night as they host Southwest Mississippi Community College for a 5 and 7 p.m. start. Um, both the men and the women defeated the Southwest Bears earlier in the season down in Summit, and they both look to repeat that again this, this week. Um, the men were ranked seventh, or ranked seven consecutive weeks in the top 20 in the NJCAA Division II soccer poll, and, uh, but they missed the playoffs by one place. Uh, they came in fourth in the South Division. Um, they had a great season. Coach Sam Wilson is doing a great job with the men's soccer team in his third year as head coach. Um, the Lady Eagles um, have made the playoffs. Um, we secured that playoff um, earlier last week, and so we're waiting now on the outcome of the Mississippi Gulf Coast and Pearl River Community College game to decide whether or not we host Itawamba here at C.D. Smithfield or we make the trip up to Senatobia to play the Northwest Community College Lady Rangers. Um, our men's golf team is currently ranked sixth in the country, um, coming off back-to-back -back wins at MACCC events one and two. Um, they're currently playing in the third event in the MACCC and, um, and hope to continue winning there. Um, Coach Ronnie Key feels strong about his team. He thinks he's got a great bunch of guys that will contend both for a state championship as well as a national championship. Um, they've been ranked in the top 20 in the last several years. He's done an outstanding job with that program, and they just continue to get better and better. Basketball season is just around the corner as both the men and the women open up Monday, November 1st. The Lady Eagles will travel down to Bishop State Community College in Mobile, Alabama for a 6 p.m. start against the Wildcats. Um, the Eagles will, will open up the season here in the Graham Gymnasium at 6.30 Monday, November 1st as they host the Birmingham Sports Academy. Um, both teams coming off playoff runs last year and look to, to rebound from that. I know the men have got six or seven sophomores returning off last year's team, which was a really good team. Uh, I think they finished third in the South last year, and they look to, to rebound off that and make another playoff run. Um, we'll take a small break right here. When we come back, we'll be joined by head women's soccer coach, Mike Smith. Welcome back to A View from the Top, brought to you by the Rush Sports Medicine Team. I'm your host, Christopher Harrelson, and each week at 9 a.m., we'll take a view from the top of Meridian Community College Athletics here on Super Talk 103.3 FM um, here in Meridian. Today, my special guest is head coach Mike Smith. Coach Smith is the head women's soccer coach for the Lady Eagles. Um, coach Smith, we're back in the playoffs, first time for six years. Um, tell me how the season went. Season's been uh, a lot of fun. Um, you know, I've had some, some good players over the past few years, really good players. Actually thought I had some really good teams. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we never could quite win those, those close ones. And, and this year we, uh, we've, we won the close ones. And that's been the big difference, I think, uh, for us. And, you know, I got a bunch of girls that, that, that compete. I got some, some freshmen that, uh, that really have helped change the culture, um, you know. So the, some of these freshmen, they they expect to win, and uh, that's kind of what we've lacked over the past few years. Um, but uh, you know, this year this year's team is uh, is a little different, and uh, and they're a bunch of competitors, and uh, it's just been a lot of fun, man. You know, to just be in the not only make the playoffs, obviously that's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, but just being in the race, right. you know, and uh, just being in games and to the very end and, and winning games that we haven't won in a long time against teams that we haven't beaten in several years, you know. Uh, so just if I could describe the season in one word, it, it would probably be fun. So last season, obviously with the COVID-19 pandemic, everybody played in the spring. And so for you and for everybody, it's the first time we've had a soccer season in the spring. 
you know, typically soccer is the first sport to kick off here at MCC, and last year it was the last sport to kick off. Um, we kind of ended the season with soccer, which was, was different for everybody. Do you think there was any pros or cons to, you know, we, we ended with soccer and we, and we had that group of girls together and they kind of, you know, bonded or whatever. And then we had summer where we had camps and, uh, and the girls came back for camps and they got to be around each other. And then boom, you know, before you know it, we were back here in August and uh, we had preseason going on. We brought in a freshman you talked about that, it, that have really kind of changed the culture. Do you think there was anything beneficial to, you know, we played and we really didn't have any downtime before we came right back to playing again? You know, I, I mean, I haven't really given that a whole lot of thought, but that's a very good point um, because I do have a, a big group of sophomores. Um, so there's seven or eight that start. So you make that point that, that those girls went through a lot of battles last year and, and lost a lot of close games last year. And so we bring that, that core back. Um, you know, having just played and taking a couple months off, but then coming back and for the camps and stuff, I think that, um, that I think definitely that made a huge difference. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, it's a great point. Never really thought about it like that. So we start off, you know, every season, we usually take a trip out of state and we'll go to Georgia. And we had a big win to start the season, and then we lost a close one right after that. And then on the heels of that, we lost, you know, a couple in a row, and we didn't get off, I would say, to the start that you wanted. But when we opened up conference play here at City Smithfield against Mississippi Gulf Coast, I felt like you made a little bit of a coaching change and a little bit of a, a, um, a formation change that, that at least from, from my viewpoint, sparked us. I, I felt like we rallied behind that little bit of a change, and we've played better because of it. And I think it's helped us win some of those close games that you talked about. Talk to me a little bit about what we did there to change from where we were to start the season to now where we are at the end. Yeah, so that first game coming in, Gulf Coast was ranked 20th in the country. And this and it was our first conference game. And I thought I thought we were really close because we did we won our first game and then we played a very tough South Georgia State team. Um you know, in Georgia, we played them close, lost 1-0, and then we came and played Northwest and lost that game too. Um, and I just thought, you know, we got good players, but something's missing, something's missing. And, um, and I didn't think we were gonna ever light up the scoreboard. So I thought, you know, if we can, if we can just keep these games close, if we can just keep these games close, 0-0, uh, for as long as possible and keep and just stay in the game, you know, and just find a way to get that goal at some point, you know, I think that would go a long way. So going into that first game against Gulf Coast, I, I just, you know, it's crucial to get off to a good start in conference play. And especially if we could just find a way to win that game, um, I figured, you know, that would give us a great spark. So we decided to go to a five back. Um, and which is a very defensive formation, obviously. So the girls were a little hesitant. They, at first, they questioned it and they weren't real sure they wanted to do that. And, uh, you know, they wanted to stay in our traditional 4 3 3. Um, but, you know, we, we told them, we like, look, you know, this is what we're going to do. We, you need to get behind it. You need to, you know, you need to support it. Right. So, Believe it or not, you know, it worked to almost perfection against Gulf Coast right. um, because we scored early and then we sat back and played low pressure defense. And basically we shrunk the field to 60 to 70 yards and we just made them break us down and, and it worked to perfection because in that, in that formation, if you can get the other team frustrated and get them to play, uh, you know, balls and force passes, and catch them on a counterattack, then uh, it can work. And that's exactly what happened. You know, we went up 1-0 and then uh, just sat back and they got frustrated and we ended up getting a second goal uh, late, in the, late in the second half and won that game 2-0. And that kind of fired the girls up, man. They don't want to play anything else but the five back. Right. And so you talked about we shut out Mississippi Gulf Coast, the number 20th team in the country. 
and uh, behind the new formation, which, which was obvious that it frustrated the, the Lady Bulldogs. But I think a big part, too, of that shutout is uh, Mary Archer, our sophomore goalkeeper from Starkville. She, um, she's been a wall back there in the goal all year. Even last year as a freshman, she was two-time player of the week last year, two-time national player of the week overall. She was player of the week coming off that Mississippi Gulf Coast game because she's just – She's done an outstanding job at stopping shots. Um, the five back limits how many shots we take, which obviously is the point, but when they've gotten opportunities, she shut them down. Um, I think she's had five shutouts this season. I mean, she's just, she's been a wall back there, you know, for us. And, and tell me a little bit about her and, and kind of how we got her and, and how she's gotten better, you know, as we, as we move on. Yeah, man, she's been, she's been great. Um, and she's just gotten even better this year. And, and a lot of that goes to our goalkeeping coach, uh, Evan Griffin, who's, who came on last spring. And, um, you know, Evan and Mary and Evan have become very close. And, and Mary even stayed in Meridian over the summer. Uh, took classes here, trained with Evan, um, you know, almost three times a week during the summer. So she just she just took that next step um, this season. She she had a great season last year, like you said. She was you know two time player of the week last year, um, but she she wasn't as confident as she is now. Right. You know she didn't come off her line as good um, last season as she is now. Like this season, she's very confident. You know coming out picking off those crosses. Um, her hands are a lot better. Her feet are a lot better. Um, you know, so she, she's been great, and, and you're right. You know, that five back, you know, limits the shots, especially limits how close they get on the shots. So they they're, they they have to take first shots further out, which, I mean, Mary is almost, I think she is six foot, right. um, if not 5'11". And uh, so it just, you know, makes it that much harder to score on her. Um, how we got her, um, you know, I saw her. I was just – watching a Starkville Academy game. I, I might even have been recruiting somebody else uh, off of another team and saw her. Um, you know, I just went up and talked to her and told her, you know, we'd be interested in having you. She didn't have any other offers right. um, coming out of high school, which was crazy looking back at it now. Um, so she came down and, and I recruited one of her teammates and, uh, you know, they both came down and, and they enjoyed it. And, you know, they, they said that they wanted to be a part of, of this, and uh, and she's she's been great, man. And uh, we're we're really going to miss her. She's got some. Uh, there's going to be some big shoes to fill uh, there next year. Uh, but you know, hopefully we can we can finish this run off in a in a good way, and you know, send her off the right way. So you talked earlier about you know some of the freshmen coming in and changing the culture, and and here in Lauderdale County, I don't think you can talk women's soccer without mentioning the Lady Knights at West Lauderdale. I mean, the run that they've had, you know, over the past five or six years of just playing for and winning state championships is huge. And so I think being able to get in there and recruit some of those girls, you know, to come, to, to stay local. Um, a lot of times kids, you know, they decide, you know, I've been in Meridian or I've been in Lauderdale County my whole life. You know, it's just, I want to go somewhere else. You know, I want to, I want right. to see what other places are like. And so, a lot of people think, well, it's easy, you know, to get these local kids to come to Meridian Community College because, you know, this is their home. This is the school they've always, they've watched. And, and in your case, you know, you've coached some of these girls since they were five or six, you know, with, with rec soccer and with um, travel soccer and different things like that. And so I think a lot of times people think, oh, well, you know, they've always been in Meridian. Why wouldn't they just stay, you know? And, and I think that's harder than some people give credit to keeping these kids here because that because they have always been here and they want to go off and they want to see what college is like um, but I think this year talking about the freshmen you were able to get in at West Lauderdale with some girls that you've known you know their whole lives whether they know it or not and um, and recruit Abby Pope and Haley Dial from West Lauderdale state champions um, at West Lauderdale and and those two I feel like it kind of sparked our defense you know we talk about that five back and um, and of course Abby's playing in the midfield there and, uh, and to me, she just, she's like a gnat on some of those, you know, offensive players. She just harasses them to no end till she finally gets the ball. And um, we talked earlier in the season, you know, nothing she does shows up in the stat line. 
you don't look at the stats and think, oh, you know, Abby Pope was a player of the game. But if you watch the game, the way she plays just completely changes the complexion. And it changes the way the other team has to try and attack us, which then sets up to that five back and, and then the outstanding goalkeeper you talked about. So tell me a little bit about, you know, recruiting. Um, so in the Mississippi, you know, in the, in the MAC, we, um, we're limited to out-of-staters or internationals. Um, we can only get three a year, so we have to recruit inside the state of Mississippi, which is open to all the community colleges in the state. So give me a little bit about, you know, how you go about recruiting and how you get those kids from West Lauderdale that have, that have won state championships to come in here and, and help change the culture and solidify that defense. Yeah, no, you're spot on um, about uh, Addison and, uh, and Haley. Um, big, big pickups. Um, you know, two of my top recruits that I had to get. Um, you know, uh, heck, Addie's a, uh, Addison's a, uh, a third generation. That's what um, I was going to say. I think I may have called her Abby Pope because both her sisters played here. And, yeah. And I, and I kind of get them confused. Addison Pope, I apologize for that. Um, Abby played here several years ago and was a great player for us as well. And you're right, you know, all, both her and her two sisters Addison. played for us. Yeah, so Addison Pope, I apologize for that. <laughs> she'll, she'll give you a hard time. I know, I know. Um, but, no, they were, they were instrumental. You know, I had to get them. Uh, Lainey Crawford, another girl from West Lauderdale. Um, you know, Lake and Wilson, Lauderdale County, uh, Savannah Cunningham, Lauderdale County. I had Mary Ashley Culpepper from, from Lauderdale County as well. She, unfortunately, uh, couldn't play. Um, but, yeah, you're right. You know, you make a good point about these, these kids from, from Meridian that have been here their whole lives, and, and they're good players. You know, we have very good uh, girl soccer players in Meridian. Um, so everybody in the state, you know, they, they come and recruit these kids and they show them some attention and, and, uh, and I've lost countless girls from Lauderdale County just to other, to other community colleges. And then, and it's, it's super frustrating, but at the same time, you know, I try not to take it too personal, um, because I don't think it is personal because I have good relationships with with almost everybody that I've coached. Um, but, you know, these kids just want to get out of Meridian sometimes and they want something different. Um, but, yeah, you know, if, if a kid doesn't want to be here, then, then obviously I don't want them to be here. Um, I want kids that want to be here, and, and Addison and Haley, you know, they, they wanted to be here. Um, they, you know, they told me they didn't want to play for anybody else. Um, they thought that that I was a big reason why they were the player that they are today, um, and that meant a lot to me. Um, and them coming to play for me has meant meant a lot. Um, and and they have changed, uh, you know, you know they've helped change the culture. Heck, I mean, I can talk about numerous games that uh, this year that that we've won or that we've just been in, and 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 they were a big reason of that. Um, but yeah, going back to recruiting, you know, we can only have four girls um, on our roster that's not from Mississippi. So, you know, heck, we got to get um, 21, you know, 21 other girls from, from Mississippi, and you got 11 junior colleges in Mississippi, you know, that, that have soccer programs. So we all recruit the same kids. Um, so, so those four out of state slash international players, you know, you, you want them to be some of your best players. Um, and believe it or not, it, it's actually a little easier to get an international in here than it is to get an out of state kid. You know, those kids from Alabama and those kids from Louisiana, they're, it's tough to, to persuade them to come to, to Meridian for just a tuition scholarship, you know, um. You know, but those those international kids, they want to, you know, they they want to get over to to America and they want to play, and um, so we've we've gotten a good pipeline to uh, from England. Uh, we've had kids from Australia, Mexico, um, Nigeria, um, Jamaica. You know, so uh, South Africa. I mean, you know, we've we've had them we've had them all in here. Um, 
So, and one of the things that I've noticed, you know, with the internationals and and, and everybody jokes, ah, oh, they're you know you're going to to Marie, Mississippi. What's you know, what's the culture change going to be for somebody coming from you know from London, England, to Marie, Mississippi? And they've actually all, to, to the best of my knowledge, adapted well and they've enjoyed their time here. Um, we've had several internationals, including one of our assistant coaches that played here and then has come back. You know, that stayed in this area. Um, we've got a, a a kid that played from Jamaica that stayed here in Meridian. He works here now. We've got a kid from um, Brazil who's back here coaching and, and finishing up his classes. So I would have never thought looking back that, man, getting kids in from England or from Brazil or from wherever that they're going to enjoy coming to Meridian. But they've actually had a great time. And I mean, and so much so, like you say, that, that they've come back years later once they've quit playing soccer and, and some of them, you know, settled here in Meridian and this is where they live. So that's right. I think it's a testament to to what you're doing with them when they get here obviously they enjoy it they enjoy the atmosphere they enjoy the you know the college life um and so they they like being here um i know on the men's side we've got a guy from england that that because of covid was allowed a third year mm -hmm. and he wanted to come back you know he enjoyed it so much that uh, he wanted to come back for that third year and, and play even more so um, i think it's a testament to to what we're doing here and what y'all are doing you know with the programs to try and keep those internationals here and obviously we can continue to get the best real quick before we close tell me a little bit about you so you're you're the kid that we've talked about you know you're the local kid who who won a state championship at west Lauderdale, stayed here local i'll let you tell what you did here and then went on and just kind of you know fill me in on 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 your path to where you how you got to where you're at right now yeah so i'm born and raised from meridian and uh you know, and then went to West Lauderdale and played for Coach Alex George there, and uh, we won a state championship in 2000, um, the first state championship ever in Lauderdale County for soccer. Um, and I think it's the only one that West Lauderdale boys have still have won. Um, uh, and then, you know, I came up here and, and played for a powerhouse <laughs> MCC uh, team um, and we you know my freshman year we won a national championship which I never would have dreamed of you know of doing um, and then my uh, sophomore year we actually finished uh, fourth in the nation um, so just just uh, obviously a dream come true there um, and I became such a better player and such a better uh, man, um, you know, my two years here, um, you know, just learned a lot of discipline, learned a lot of life lessons, um, took some time off from, from soccer, not from soccer, I took some time off from, from class, um, and just started working, um, you know, and, and then during that time I started coaching my little brother, um, and one of his rec teams, and really fell in love with, so you know, coaching. You know, I knew I always knew I loved soccer, but, and, but then I realized, you know, I, I want to be a part of. I still want to be involved in soccer, and and ended up being pretty good at coaching. Um, you know, and and then came back and um, actually went into Delta State and finished playing, and got my degree, uh, so I could be a teacher, so because I, I wanted to coach high school. And came back to Meridian um, and, you know, got my dream job, which was here at MCC. Coach Alex George let me be his assistant coach, which uh, obviously real thankful for that. Um, eternally grateful. Um, you know, and then, you know, here we are. Um, became the women's coach in 2012 and been been coach ever since, man. And then it's, and it's been a great, great, great time, man. And wouldn't change anything and I hope I can stay here for you know as long as they'll have me um, I love it here and this is my hometown and uh, I bleed green and white well that's great um, once again my guest today is head women's soccer coach Mike Smith I want to thank you for being a part of this and um, we're gonna take a quick break and come back from a view from the top not essential never let anyone tell you that again never doubt your abilities to make a difference how do I know this about you? Because I'm a teacher. 
I am the one who will push you harder and farther than you could have ever imagined. Teach you things that you never thought possible. And if you will give me 100%, then I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you and together we will change your future. MCC, find your wings. Welcome back to A View from the Top of Meridian Community College Athletics. We come to you every Wednesday at 9 a.m. here at 103.3 FM Super Talk Meridian. Each week we're going to take an in-depth look at what's going on with Meridian Community College Athletics. This week we were fortunate to be joined by head women's soccer coach Mike Smith as he talked to us a little bit about the program and about where they're going as they start their playoff run here in a couple of days. Basketball season kicks off just around the corner. The men open up in the Graham Gymnasium Monday, November 1st against um, Birmingham Sports Academy at 6.30 p.m. You can watch that game and you can watch all our home games at mccEagles.live. The Lady Eagles will travel to Mobile, Alabama to face off against the Bishop State Lady Wildcats for a 6 p.m. tip-off. Um, our men's soccer team is wrapping up the MACCC event number three as they've won the first two events so far this season. They look to continue their winning ways. Um, to keep up with all what's going on at Meridian Community College, join us on social media. Like us on Facebook at MCC Community, MCC Athletics, and on Twitter at MCC Eagles Sports. Um, if you missed any of today's show, you can always find the podcast on our YouTube page. Just search Meridian Community College, Meridian Community College, subscribe, and uh, stay up to date on what's going on here at Meridian Community College. And once again, we thank you for being a part of the View from the Top, brought to you by the Rush Sports Medicine team here on 103.3 Super Talk Meridian.